God has good plans for you this month. Lift up your voice and thank him. Father, I thank you. The never failing God, I thank you. The ever dependable God, I thank you. The one that is faithful to all of his promises. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. Blessed be your holy name, O God. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visited him? I thank you for your good plans for every one member of this church. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. Your plans cannot fail. Your word cannot fail. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Thank you, Asian of Days. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We're going to pray for every one member of this church. I hate it to hear that a, a member just passed on, he was sick. It will never happen again. Amen. Please, even after we have finished this prayer, if you have anything that looks like an attack, please get us informed. It's not when you have read the thing has reached a bad end where the person is already gone. That's when we will now be hearing the story. It's not supposed to be so. We are going to pray, Lord, any plan marked out by the devil against any one member of this church let that plan scatter Amen. by the blood of jesus let the arrangement be punctured Amen. lift up your voice and begin to talk to god anyone marked out by the devil to undo the person's life to wipe him out any conspiracy of witchcraft any program of untimely death your word said a cause costless shall not stand a cause costless shall not stand by the blood of jesus by the fire of the holy ghost wherever that arrangement wherever that counsel was taken let it scatter let it scatter by the blood of Jesus, let the arrangement be punctured. By the blood of Jesus, let the arrangement be scattered. Anyone marked out for death, anyone marked out to be wasted, wherever the cancel was taken, by the speaking blood, by the speaking blood of Jesus, we decree, I stand on this altar of liberation. Let that plan fail. Let that plan fail. In the name of Jesus. Lekandayado shagaderos. Lekopreketeruzi and ragada. Any coven power. Witchcraft altar. In the name of Jesus. Lepunta nandre dino sheto. Eluze doli aprekleketo zezonde ala. By the blood of Jesus. We command the plan to be destroyed. We command the arrow to backfire. We decree the judgment be swallowed by the blood of Jesus. Lerande, lerondo, jeglo, preglendo, ziso, nangaraya. Rezo, zekle, prekleteria. Rusha, tonande, rededo, shaka, dadada, ya, bababa. Lego, robo, dogo, yege, dege, robo, dogo, yege, dege, pregede. Zutali, negodo, jego, lege, regedu, zagalada. And Zusa Nega Bregadole Zere Diata, Je Totali Ambragado Zodon Dododo, Ela Mama Dino Zuse Nega Degate. Zeronda Brado Shekotereta, Leka Tayataya Prekota, by the blood of Jesus, 
We command every satanic arrangement to be disappointed. Let their plan fail. Let their plan fail. Let their plan backfire. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. No one of you will be wasted. Wherever they have taken your name to let the blood of Jesus swallow the blood. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Anyone that has programmed you to die on timely death, let the person die your death. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever they are calling your name to kill you, let the blood of Jesus strike their camp. Let the person calling your name answer the evil call. If you are saying amen, say better amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Say better amen. Put your hands together for the Lord and please be seated. Good news. Friday, if you like, come on. If you like, no come. We are starting operation back to sender. Friday. I'm not going to wait till Monday. We are, now that the, I'm getting the prompting, we are doing it now. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So Friday, thank God is, we are still in the three-day prayer and fasting. Make sure you don't miss it. In Jesus' name. In our series of teaching for this midweek, our focus is on unveiling the wonders in the world. The wonders in the world. And our focus for this evening is the wonders of fellowship. The wonders of fellowship. My pastor was sharing with me as he did before yesterday night of a professor in Covenant University who just went to his village to roof the small house he has started. Just went to roof the small house he has started. And as he came back, he just came back. He said, he's tired, he's tired. So they went and uh, they just uh, said he should rest. So they now say the nurse should just give him an injection to sleep. That's how the man died. I say he didn't die. He has been programmed. That's classical programming. <laughs> God forbid, Barty. Hebrew chapter 10 and verse 25. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Fellowship is an awesome privilege. Giving to man to build up intimacy with God to consolidate his spirituality with God to fine tune his God nature his God status with God fellowship started way back in Genesis God loves fellowship God desires fellowship God longs for fellowship. Scripture says, at the cool of the day, God came to fellowship with man. God value our fellowship more than our activity. God value our fellowship more than my preaching. You can preach without having fellowship. Because you just go and carry already made someone. But you can't have fellowship and lack his presence. 
You can't have fellowship and miss his glory. One of my strongest prayer for 2018 is for increased fellowship. Increased fellowship. Because there are too many things that can take you away from God and you think you will be feeling that you are spiritual. You can, have, you can be out of fellowship and have a form of godliness without the power thereof. The songwriter sang, I just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily in your presence. I just want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. Feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, in your presence. That's where I always want to be. I just want to be. I just want to be with you. If you have been used to fellowship and you are suddenly missing fellowship, you will know that something is missing. Anytime you miss fellowship and you didn't miss anything, you have lost touch with God. Our fellowship is the custodian of our spirituality custodian of our spirituality. No wonder the psalmist said, O oh Lord, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul longed for thee. My flesh tested after thee to see thy power I have seen, as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. He said again, wanting have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after fellowship is sought after when you long for fellowship for the one you truly love distance is not a problem am i saying the truth you can go anywhere to go and meet the person why because fellowship even if they ask ah where are you going so i'm going to see somebody ah can't you call him on phone <laughs> fellowship is stronger than phone call <laughs> am i saying something to somebody The strength of your fellowship will determine the thickness of the presence of God around you. People that lack fellowship, they lack glory. People that lack fellowship, they lack glory. If you have been begged or encouraged to come to church, you are not in touch with God. Okay, we have three-day prayer and fasting now. You are around for Wednesday. And then, uh, say, uh, no, no, I should be, I was there on Wednesday. There's no need going on Thursday and Friday now. It's enough. You are not in touch with fellowship. People that are in touch, it is never enough. Do you know why it is never enough? Anytime they go, there is something they feel. Anytime they go, something is added. You don't go to where something is not added. You go to where things are added. Psalm 84 and the 7, they go from strength to strength. They go from strength to strength. 84 verse 7, not 87 verse 4. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. 
they go from strength to strength. Spiritual strength, mental strength, physical strength. They go from strength to strength. So every time we appear before God, our strength is enhanced. We are refreshed by the power of his presence. Our hope comes alive. Even if we came in hopeless, we are not permitted to go back hopeless. There is power in fellowship. Fellowship renews confidence. Doesn't only renew strength, it renews confidence. He that is joined to the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Bring a hopeless man into a place of fellowship. A hopeless man will become a hopeful man. There's power in fellowship. Someone that is at the verge of giving up, bring him into fellowship. Is revived. There's power in fellowship. You can't be in fellowship and miss his presence. You can't be in fellowship and things remain disordered in your life. No! The place of fellowship is the place of renewal. It's the place of divine rearrangement. It's the place where plans are shaped. The plan of God for your life is shaped. Every time you are in fellowship. That's why scripture says, do not. Say with me, do not. Forsake the assembly of the brethren. Do not. As such as the manner of some. Do not. Someone may say, okay, maybe it's because he's pastor. Before I became pastor, wasn't I a member? Ah. Before I became a pastor, wasn't I a member? A day I spend in your court is more than a thousand years outside. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. All through my stay in University of Calabar, if I miss fellowship, know that that day our practical exceeded seven o'clock. And I can't count up to three or four times that I miss fellowship. It's not possible. That's from year one to final year. When something is built as a lifestyle, struggle dies. When fellowship becomes a lifestyle, it becomes part of you. It becomes part of you. You are not struggling. Even God knows that this person, if you take him out away from my presence, something may go wrong. He will always be there. So the place of fellowship also is the place of illumination. Where we are illuminated. For in thy light we see light. No one that David call it the secret place of the Most High. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under. We are not visitors, we are to abide. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. He said, Surely He will save me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He that dwelleth, not he that visited, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Man, 
Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall bear much more fruit. So our fellowship is the secret for our productivity. Is the secret for our fruitfulness. Is the secret for our success. He that dwelleth, he that abideth. He that dwelleth, he that abide. To abide means to stay permanently. If ye abide in me, and my word abide in you. So you can't be in fellowship and his word does not abide in you. If he abide in me and my word abide in you, he say, I am my father. We come and make ourselves manifest in thee. So you become a carrier of divine manifestation if you are an addict of fellowship. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Naturally, you don't release your secret to visitors. True of us. No matter how the person visits you, you will still be screening the person with one eye. Am I saying the truth? You'll be screening the person with one eye. Just observing the person. Gradually, you're observing the person to know whether the person is there to collect what you want or he wants fellowship or relationship. Now, hear me. It's not everybody that comes to you that likes you. If you like, agree. If you like, don't agree. It's not everybody that comes to you that likes you. Some there are, are, are there as informants. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. Some are there as monetary spirits. Some are there because they want to learn from you. Some are there because they want your life to affect them. There is something they have seen in you that they want to also show in them. Not everybody that comes around you that likes you. Jesus had 12 disciples. One never believed him. His name was Thomas. Another one came with Jim Jim Fire, but all of a sudden, he became the principal betrayer. His name is Judas. So please, <laughs> fellowship is choice. So, even with man, fellowship is choice. Fellowship is choice. Fellowship with God is your choice. But the truth is that you can't fellowship with God and not end up looking like God. Scripture said they took note of them that they had been with Jesus. Who you are always with, people will take note of you that this is the person you are following. True of us. It's not difficult for them to know your traits if they can know who you are following. And they took note of them that they had been with Jesus. Bishop Abiyo said, if you walk with God, you will end up looking as God. The best gift I got this my birthday is that uh, message. Increase your work with God, not your work for God. You can achieve working for God, but you can only be fulfilled working with God. And working with God requires fellowship. Working with God requires intimacy. You can't work with someone closely and not get the person's secrets. And you, you need more secrets to become outstanding in life. The secret things belong to the Lord. But the things revealed, they are for us and for our children's children. Am I saying the truth? No wonder. No wonder. Great men 
They seek to fellowship with people that will open them up to greater light. Great men. They seek to fellowship with people that will open them up to greater light. Likewise, God, you can't walk with the most high or fellowship with the most high and end up living the most low life. No. Your life must obviously experience an upgrading. Why? Secrets others cannot assess, you will assess it. What others can never know, you will know it. What others are struggling to get is cheaply delivered into your hand. Why? As a heart answered to heart. As a heart answered to heart. If there is a longing in your heart for God, I want to let you know it will not be difficult for God to reveal his secrets to you. There is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty showed him what to do. The testimony of Joseph is too sweet and the Lord was with him. And the Lord was with him. Why? Because he too he was with God. No wonder in Second Chronicles chapter 15 he said, the Lord is with you while you are with him. If you forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. God is not begging for your fellowship. You are the one that needs it. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you forsake him, he will also forsake you. Let's read it. Second Chronicles chapter 15. We're going to read it. Second Chronicles chapter 15, studio. We'll read it from verse 1. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. Verse 2. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will also do what? Look at the next verse. Now for a long time, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. But when they in their trouble, they turned unto God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. So when you stay out of fellowship, you enter trouble. When you stay out of fellowship, calamity will meet you. When you stay out of fellowship, get ready for dryness. You will dry financially. You will dry mentally. You will dry physically. When you stay out of fellowship, stagnation will become your neighbor. It is dangerous to stay without fellowship. He said, for a long time, Israel was without the true God and without a teaching priest. Meaning, there was no one giving them caution. There was no one telling them, stop there, you are misbehaving. There was no one to rebuke them. The one I'm seeing you going, you are about missing it all. For a long time, they were without the true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. Nothing established lives like rules. People don't like rules. Hear me? God is a jealous God. Now, even naturally, when you see someone close to you, begin to walk with someone that is a threat or an enemy, you react. You react. That's the way God reacts. God reacts. How do I know God reacts? Let's look at it. But that will be a teaching for tomorrow on the wonders of right association. Let's look at it. Second Chronicle chapter 20 and verse 35. Scripture talk about the man called Jehoshaphat. The same Jehoshaphat God told, told uh, stand still. I, the Lord, will fight for you. God is now the one fighting him. Let's read it. 
Second Chronicle. And after this, did Jehoshaphat, king of Judea, join himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who did very what? Look at the next verse. And he joined himself with him to make sheep to go to Tashis. And they made the sheep in Enzion Giba. Look at the next verse again. Then Eliezer, the son of Dedova of Marasha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaziah, the Lord has broken thy works. And thy sheep were broken, then we were not able to go to what? Tashes. God is protective of people that fellowship with him. He shields them. He loves your fellowship. So anyone that will corrupt your fellowship with him, he will fight the person. He will fight it. He will fight it. You can't be in the two camps. You either love one and hate the other. There is nothing like, eh, no, when I go, I will fake it. Fake what? Fake what? If I don't see you in the physical, I will see you through dreams. I believe God for that grace. If I don't see you physical, I will see you through dreams. There's no need wasting time. Dr. Paul Lenenche said, there are people you must miss if you must not miss God. Because missing God is missing good. There are people you must miss if you must not miss God. Because missing God is missing life. There are people you must avoid if God must not avoid you. So fellowship is costly. Fellowship is what? It's costly. You must protect it. You must guide it. You must protect it. You must protect your fellowship. I told my wife the other day, I don't think this person should be coming to our house. He said, hey, wait till you don't see again. I said, well, I've received a prompting. You should not come again. Take it or leave it. But I follow my instinct. And my instinct has never failed me in that direction. I'm not interested whether you feel bad or whether you feel good. Don't come again. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? Period. I understand it that there are some people you try to correct, they will be on the defensive. The best thing is run for your life. Am I saying the truth? Run for your life. If you don't know, I want to let you know now, God values your fellowship. Something wouldn't have fallen for the Philistine women if something was not catching his attention and it was not missing fellowship. It was from missing fellowship that in the evening hour when it is dark, when nobody sees that's when Samson started going for fellowship with Philistine women. And anywhere you are going and nobody knows, be careful. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's how Samson started. He started missing fellowship. was not going to the Philistine women. Scripture mentioned Philistine women. 
But Delilah was the backbreaker. Delilah was the one that was with the last Koboko. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Delilah was the one that was with the last Koboko. Anytime you are missing fellowship, no wonder Paul said, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Anytime you are missing godly fellowship, another fellowship is calling you. Anytime. Anytime you are missing godly fellowship, there is another fellowship you must enter. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of his Lord. And on his Lord doth he meditate day and night. The next verse, verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth. Now, can you see this mystery? So, our flourishing life is determined by our fellowship. His leaves shall not wither. Meaning, when you are in a wrong fellowship, get ready, you will dry up. You will dry up, you will pack up. His leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Hear me and hear me well. There are people, oh, he said, the day that King Uzziah died, what happened? Isaiah saw the Lord, which means there are people you must not fellowship with. If not, you may not see God. Do you know, we will dwell more on it tomorrow, your fellowship with God affects your fellowship with man. Your fellowship with God affects your fellowship with man. If your fellowship with God is a growing one, any man that will afflict your fellowship with God, you begin to avoid it. You begin to avoid it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. My son, if sinners entice thee, Consent thou not. <laughs> consent thou not. If sinners entice thee, consent thou not. It has nothing to do. It's my childhood friend. Your childhood friend can become your childhood enemy. Your childhood friend can become your childhood disaster. 20 children don't play for 20 years. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Fellowship is costly. Lastly, you cannot love God, be in fellowship with God, and not love his house. Every lover of fellowship with God is a lover of the house of God. David said, my love and my affection is set towards the house of my God. And where a man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. My love and my affection is set towards the house of my God. Papa said, you have not known my heartbeat for God until you have discovered my love for God. Please, I beg you, increase your love for God. Fellowship will not be a struggle. Increase your love for God. Increase your love for God. 
I'm not telling you because I'm pastor, because me too, I'm pressing forward. I'm pressing towards greater fellowship. I long for greater fellowship. There is a place each and every one of us occupy in fellowship with God. And God longs for it. He said, the hour has come. When they that worship him in spirit shall worship him in spirit and in what? Truth. It's only meant for those that are in fellowship. It's not for everybody. It's meant for those that are in fellowship. Lastly, when you are truly in fellowship, you become immune, saturated, endued with the presence of God. For in his presence, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So when you, are all, when you are always in fellowship, you enjoy pleasures with God, not pressure. Fellowship takes away pressure. It gives you pleasure. If you are truly in fellowship, I want to let you know, you will go places. I say you will go places. People that are always in fellowship, they enjoy constant manifestation of his presence. I will be with you. I will go with you. I will be with you. I will be with you. I will go with you. I will be with you. I will go with you. I will be with you. I will go with you. Why? Fellowship. People that are always in fellowship, let me summarize it this way, they are solution carriers. For in Mount Zion, they shall be what? They are solution carriers. They have a solution. They have an answer. There is something God will always tell them that can profit someone else. People that are always in fellowship, they never miss the marvelous help of God. They never miss the marvelous help of God. Concerning Isaiah, scripture say, as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to do what? Prosper. As long as he's... It takes one that is in fellowship to seek continuously. As long as he sought the Lord. As long as he sought the Lord. The Lord made him to prosper. They looked unto him and they were lighted. And their faces were no more ashamed. You can't be in fellowship and end up in shame. No. You can't be in fellowship and end up in shame. People that are always in fellowship, they enjoy the marvelous help of God. Psalm 20 verse 1. He said, the Lord hear thee in the days of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. If you are not in his presence, how will he give you help? You only give help to people that are in your presence. Am I saying the truth? Likewise, you cannot be in his presence and end up helpless. You enjoy the marvelous help of God. I'm discovering David's secrets gradually. Scripture says, day by day, God sent men to help David until he became what? A mighty host. Why? The secret is found in Psalm 27. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The next verse. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes. I won't forget what Bishop Abiy explained the other day. He said there are enemies and there are foes. Your enemy is different from your foes. Came up against, came up, up came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumble and fail. Look at the next verse. Though an host should encamp against me, 
my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise up against me, in this will I be confident. Look at verse 4 now. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Now look at the next verse now. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. The next verse now. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifice of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. People that dwell in fellowship with God, they always end up in victory. He said, though an enemy encompass me round about, surely they shall gather, but not by me. Anyone that gather against you, they shall fall. They shall fall. They shall fall. From today, I see the falling down of your enemies. If you are saying amen, say it better, amen. Rise up to your feet. We are going to pray the prayer of David. He said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. He said, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Fellowship is the joy of our salvation. He said, we take away the heart of stone and put in them the heart of flesh. I will pour my spirit upon them. We are going to pray, Lord, restore me back to fellowship. Paul was angry with the Galatians. He said, oh, Galatians, who has bewitched you? Did you start in the spirit to end up in the flesh? There are many of us here now. Once zealous for God, but now overtaken by high-level carnality. Church is like a, a fun fair now. Why? They have lost touch with fellowship. We are going to pray. Lord, restore me back to fellowship. Restore my fellowship with you. Whatever has taken me away, whatever has made me miss fellowship with God, Lord, restore me back to fellowship. <coughs> Lift up your voice and talk to God. Pray consciously, Lord, restore me that I may know him and the fellowship of his suffering. Lord, restore me back to fellowship. Restore my passion for prayer. Restore my passion for the word. Restore my passion for your presence. Lord, deliver me from anything that is taking my passion away from you. Lord, restore me back to fellowship. In the name of Jesus, restore me back to fellowship. Restore me back to fellowship with you. Restore me back to fellowship with you. Wherever I've missed fellowship with you, Lord, restore me. Restore me. In the name of Jesus, restore my heart. Restore my passion. Restore my longing for your presence. In the name of Jesus Christ, restore my heart. Restore my passion. Restore my longing for fellowship with you. Lord, restore my heart. Restore my passion. Restore my longing for fellowship with you in the name of Jesus. Restore my heart, Lord. Let your fire burn off. Let your fire consume. Whatever want to take me away from your fellowship. Whatever want to take me away from fellowship with you, let your fire burn it off. Let your fire burn it off. Holy Ghost, burn every chaff. Burn every chaff. Burn every chaff. Whatever is afflicting my fellowship with God, Lord, I pray for restoration. I pray for recovery. I pray for restoration. I pray for recovery. Spirit of God, restore me. Restore me back in fellowship with you. 
Leambolo Jekusetele, and Kupra Klekotosi Zenia, Jetara Diazo Nakatele, Rekoshago Rakatale Rido Zenota, Lempri Dudu Enzo Nante Ata, Jekusi Zoli Ambre Klekota, Rekotopre Kleketosi Zo, Legorin Diaba. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. As you partake of this communion, the passion which you once had with God is restored today in the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say better amen. <laughs> Pharaoh told them, told Moses, they said they want to go and worship God. He said, you will go, but not very far. If there is anything the enemy is planning is to make sure that you don't go far. You do it very shallow. But Moses said, no. We will go very far. We will go very far. As you partake of this communion, the passion that you lost before is restored in the name of Jesus. The place you occupy in fellowship with God is restored today in the name of Jesus. Any agent of the devil planted to abort your fellowship with God, I decree by this communion, let there be a divine disconnection. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Whatever the enemy has programmed against you, against your life, against your destiny, against your career, by this communion, let that wicked agenda be aborted in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.